Hi, I'm Karen Pennington, and today I want to talk a little bit about Bob Ross. Um, most of you probably know who he is. Um, just to jog your memory, he's a famous painter, uh, kind of a popular painter. He had a show for, I think, a couple decades on PBS. I know I saw it on Saturday morning when I was a kid. Um, but even now, he's got this resurgence of popularity. They have t-shirts for him. They have all kinds of different just items that you can buy. And it sort of begs the question, um, a fairly quiet man, definitely not mainstream culture, just painted. That's all, he just painted. And people watched him. What made him so popular? Um, well, I mean, it can't go without noting. The hair was part of it. He had very, very unique hair. Um, that you wouldn't necessarily normally see on someone, um, maybe of his build or stature or, well, let's be honest, complexion. And he, it, they actually, I looked this up, this is true, they have chia pets, you know, the things where the, um, the, the plants just grow and grow and grow and grow out of the pottery. They have chia pets for Bob Ross's hair. <laughs> it's, it's so funny, and they're probably <laughs> so well-selling. It's so fun. Um, he seemed to own that. I'm sure that's part of it. Um, but the thing I'll tell you, when I was a kid, the thing that compelled me on the times I watched it was just the process of painting. And, and what I liked about it was he would like put this blotch and just look like this chaotic blotch of paint. And then he put a blotch here and he put a blotch there and there and there. And, and you're kind of going, what is he doing? This is, I mean, it looked like a mess. And then all of a sudden, just right at the end, it all came into view. And this thing that just looked like a whole heap of mess everywhere became this masterpiece. And if Bob Ross painted it, I can guarantee you it was worth something. <laughs> um, it kind of reminds me of us, of me. Um, me in particular, because I'll be honest, I'm a mess. I am a mess, a hot mess. I have never ironed a shirt properly. I've never folded one of those fitted sheets, I just can't, I, I folded them. It just didn't end well. And I've literally melted chicken before. I didn't even know it was possible. There are things messy that I've done. <laughs> you didn't think it was humanly possible. I have a gift for making a mess and being a mess. But God's still in it, so I'm still good. Um, so in a couple of weeks, um, I'm about to have a dream happen. I have a book called An Anointed Mess that tells you how much I feel about I'm a mess. I'm a mess, but I'm God's mess. God uses me, so I'm good. So this whole book is coming out. I've it, It's been like 15 years in the making. And um, it's a dream, but it started with a nightmare. It started about 15 years ago. I wasn't thinking of a book. We were thinking of a house. And we thought we got one that was great. Um, but we inherited a renter that cost us a lot of money and a lot of heartache. And then after we got into the house, more than that, multiple times that, of just things that broke down. Um, we had an inspector that just didn't catch most of the stuff and just everything broke down. And then, like, so I start writing about it and it's like, oh, this is great. You know, I, it, it was horrible and <laughs> it heartache and I cried and I lost I just so much and, but then, I got this article out of it, and I'm like, oh, this is this is good. And I wrote a few more articles, look back on my life, and I'm like, great, I got a book. It's a dream. And it's like God was saying to me, no, no, I'm not, I'm not done yet. <laughs> so then the recession hit, and we lost a bunch of jobs, and we had to move, and we had all these family crises. And so then I was like, great, it's done. And um, I tried to get it published, and it was it wasn't getting published. And then my friend said. Um, your book's not done yet. A very good friend of mine said, your book's not done yet. So I kind of put it aside. And in the meantime, um, lost a few more jobs. Didn't get fired. We just happened to work for nonprofit agencies in a recession, <laughs> and they had to lay us off. Um, and I just had such a hard time. I'm sure a lot of you have gone through this thing with all the different recessions. And um, then we had more family issues. Then we had like one year where eight people close to us died. We had one year where five of our cars broke down. It was like thematic messes each year. And um, looking back on it, it, you know, there was, there was a lot of chaos. I could sit and list all these horrible, horrible things that, that happened. We were almost homeless a few times. Um, we had, well, my, our daughter was a was a teenager. I don't even need to say any more than that. You know, anyone who's had teenagers, that there's an anointed mess right there. And she's beautiful. 
and I hope she doesn't disown me for saying that, but, and I love having her, but teenagers are rough, you know? Um, and uh, through all of that, I mean, amazing happened. We, we gained peace. Our relationship strengthened. Um, we were on the brink of divorce no less than one or two times, and our marriage is stronger than it's been, and we've developed these friends, and... Um, this new idea of peace, this new awareness of who God is. Um, and now it doesn't depend on things going well. We can take joy in God even when things aren't going well because we know he's using it. Um, it. It's pretty amazing. So so God wrote this book in me, and, and I want to share it. But God wrote this peace in me, and God wrote this life in me, and it's and I look at myself, and I look at the anti-iron shirt, and I look at the messed up hair, and I look at the tendency to say the dumbest things sometimes. And then you put it all together with God's hand, with God's brushstroke, and it's a masterpiece. My life is a masterpiece. <laughs> um, and I, th I think of Romans 8, 28, such a popular verse, that God works all things together for the good of those who love him. That's painting language. God is like the great Bob Ross of the universe. You know what I'm saying? There's a blotch here, a blotch there, a blotch there. Something, maybe a blotch of painting that's a mistake that I put on there. And God uses it all. God uses the great. God uses, he can't even use a sin because he can recycle anything. He can use everything. You know, he doesn't cause everything. But he can use everything and make a masterpiece out of anybody's life. Listen, if he can do it with me, he can do it with anybody. Let me give you one more example because I love this story. The story of David. You want to talk about a hot mess? He was born the last of like a gazillion sons and so low was he on the totem pole that when Samuel came to anoint kings, he went through all of David's father, David's brothers and then said to David's dad, don't you have any other kids? And Jesse's like, oh yeah, David, he's not much. You know, <laughs> that's the, you know, that's the Pennington translation. So he wasn't even, you know, his dad kind of forgot about him. Um, and he was a little shepherd boy and I mean. He had the nerve to go into a battle without any armor. He couldn't even wear the armor. He's like falling over with the armor. It weighs more than him. And then he defeats a giant. Um, so there's a nice thing. But then a little bit later on, you know, Saul gets mad at him. So he spends like years on the run. He spends time, like talk about, we said we were close to homeless. He lived in a cave. And then he got this following, but it was like all the outlaws. And so they're following him around through the desert for probably at least 10 years. He's just wandering, pretty much nomadic, homeless. Somebody's trying to kill him the whole time. So that's great. And then you're like, okay, so he's learned his lesson. He becomes king. Then he does, like, the dumbest thing. He doesn't go to war. He commits adultery. He goes into a battle that he knows he's going to lose just so he can kill the husband of the person he impregnated. I mean... This is his life's a soap opera, you know? And then in the end, um, he kind of messes up a little with his kids. Um, he is a mess. I mean, first and second Samuel, if you want to read about a mess, first and second Samuel, David. But if you want to read about the masterpiece, look at the Psalms. Look at what he talks to. You. Because you see, in all that mess, David was a man after God's own heart. In all of that mess, God used him to build a kingdom. And all of that, the insignificant, scrawny little boy um, and the king who forgot his place and the father who forgot his kids, and all of that, I mean, we're talking about major mistakes. God used all those paintings. <laughs> he made a masterpiece because God is the master. <laughs> and so I'm just saying today, if God can take this mess and make a masterpiece, and God can take that mess of David, I mean, I never killed anybody, <laughs> and make a masterpiece out of him. God can and will and does make a masterpiece out of you. And anything that you think is purposeless, anything, I can tell you, just lay it at the feet of God. He can and he will use it for you when you give your life to him, when you keep committing to him and when you keep seeking him. Just don't stop. It's a great daily adventure.